Europe's Last Summer, who started the Great War in 1914, is a thought-provoking historical analysis by David Frumkin that delves deep into the complex web of political alliances, imperial ambitions, and diplomatic failures that led to the outbreak of World War I. In this literary analysis, we will explore the key themes and arguments presented in the book, examining Frumkin's perspective on the origins of the Great War. Frumkin's central argument revolves around the idea that the outbreak of World War I was not an inevitable consequence of political and military tensions in Europe, but rather the result of individual decisions and miscalculations made by key actors in the summer of 1914. He challenges the traditional view that portrays Germany as the sole aggressor and argues for a more nuanced understanding of the events leading to the war. One of the key themes explored in the book is the notion of the blank check. Frumkin emphasizes the role of Austria-Hungary's July ultimatum to Serbia, which was backed by a blank check from Germany, as a pivotal moment. He argues that Germany's unconditional support for Austria-Hungary emboldened the latter to take a hardline stance against Serbia, ultimately leading to a chain reaction of mobilizations and declarations of war. Frumkin also sheds light on the complex network of alliances that existed in Europe at the time. He highlights the entangling alliances between major powers like Germany, Austria-Hungary, Russia, France, and Britain, which created a situation where a regional conflict could quickly escalate into a full-scale war. The author suggests that these alliances made it difficult for leaders to step back from the brink of war, as they were bound by commitments to their allies. Furthermore, Frumkin delves into the personalities and motivations of key leaders, such as Kaiser Wilhelm II, Tsar Nicholas II, and Emperor Franz Joseph. He argues that personal biases, insecurities, and misjudgments played a significant role in the decision-making process leading up to the war. For instance, Wilhelm II's desire to assert Germany's position on the world stage and his fear of encirclement influenced his support for Austria-Hungary's aggressive stance. The book also addresses the failure of diplomacy in averting the crisis. Frumkin points out the lack of effective communication and diplomacy among the major powers during the July crisis. Diplomatic channels were often sluggish and mismanaged, with misunderstandings and misinterpretations exacerbating the situation. The absence of direct communication between Berlin and St. Petersburg allowed for the escalation of the crisis. Frumkin's narrative is supported by extensive research and analysis of primary sources, diplomatic correspondence, and historical accounts. He paints a vivid picture of the political landscape of Europe in 1914, capturing the tension and uncertainty that prevailed. In conclusion, Europe's Last Summer challenges conventional interpretations of the origins of World War I. David Frumkin argues that the war was not an inevitable outcome of underlying tensions but the result of specific decisions, actions, and misjudgments made by key actors in the summer of 1914. By exploring themes such as the blank check, the web of alliances, and the role of individual leaders, Frumkin provides readers with a nuanced understanding of this critical period in history. His meticulous research and engaging narrative style make the book a valuable contribution to the study of the First World War, inviting readers to reconsider their perceptions of who started the Great War.